Hi viewers, welcome back. In today's video, we are going to discuss about the diagnostic procedures or the diagnostic test for the respiratory system disorders. So, when we have some respiratory disorders, you, you go to the hospital. Okay. So, what are the regular investigations that is being done in the hospitals to rule out respiratory disorders? Okay. So, we have lot of disorders. So, one by one let us discuss. So, the first thing is your pulse oximeter. Okay. So, pulse oximeter is the common very common diagnostic uh, test. It is not a diagnostic test, it is just uh, to rule out, it is just a, a part of the physical examination. So, what is a pulse oximeter? How does it looks? Okay. This is pulse oximeter. Okay. So, now this pulse oximeter we are going to check the oxygen level or the saturation of the patient. So, how do we use this? Okay. So, now like before you uh, start testing you have to check whether battery is on and whether it is functioning or not. Then what you have to do is like probably you will be inserting your middle finger. Okay. So, this is always the apt finger which will give you the highest saturation levels. Okay. So, you insert your middle finger and you have to switch on your pulse oximeter. Okay. So, now you will get your readings here. So, you will get two readings one is your oxygen saturation level and the other one is the pulse. So, two readings you will get in your like pulse oximeter. Okay. So, one is your oxygen saturation and the other is your pulse level. See the oxygen saturation level which is going to be from normal 90 to 100 you consider is normal and when it is going below 90 you have to consider it is an abnormal reading and the pulse from 70 to 80 also it is considered normal. Okay. So, however, the reading you have to keep watching. So, these are the two things you will be assessing. So, with your pulse oximeter probe you are going to check the saturation level of the patient. You are going to assess what is the saturation what uh, like to rule out hypoxemia and then comes the capnography. Capnography is the procedure to assess the carbon dioxide level in the blood. Okay. So, this is to rule out whether the patient is having higher level of carbon dioxide in the blood. So, you do a procedure called as capnography and then we have the sublingual carbon dioxide level. So, you have devices which are kept under the sublingual region. Okay. So, under the tongue you place the device and you will be ruling out the carbon dioxide level which is going to rule out hypoxia which is due to increased carbon dioxide levels and then coming to the ABG analysis. So, ABG analysis is nothing but the arterial blood gas analysis. So, what does this going to tell you? So, when you are going to do an ABG analysis that will tell you the arterial that is your exchange of oxygen and the carbon dioxide in the blood. So, that is in the alveolar tissue when it is getting exchanged you will be able to analyze the carbon dioxide and the oxygen levels. Okay. And this will tell you the pH of the blood. Okay. So, to rule out this ABG you will be doing an arterial blood gas sampling and then we have the D dimer test. The D dimer test is used to analyze the thrombin and the plasmin activity in the blood. This is used to rule out DIC that is your disseminated intravascular coagulopathy and otherwise pulmonary embolism. These type of coagulation disorders you will be able to analyze using the D dimer test. And then coming to the next test we have the CBC complete blood count. So, in this complete blood count we are going to rule out the uh, oxygen level. Oxygen level in the sense the HB level you will be ruling out that is like how much is the blood is composing of hemoglobin which is able to transport oxygen in the blood. So, you are able to rule out the HB level as well as you are able to rule out infection that is all your sites okay. lymphocytes, leukocytes like that you will be able to rule out whether there is an infection for the patient or 
not okay so that is with your complete blood count and then we have the sputum analysis sputum analysis you can do sputum analysis for a tuberculous patient when we suspect any type of lower respiratory tract infections okay with your sputum analysis you will be able to rule out the color consistency and the like qualities of the sputum what the patient is having okay as well as you are able to rule out the acid fast bacilli that is the microorganism which is related to tuberculosis as well as you are able to rule out the other infections other severe infections of the lower respiratory tract which includes your bronchitis bronchitis and your pneumonia all these conditions it will be very helpful sometimes you will be able to rule out like any pus collection or discharges also you can get it through the sputum and then coming to the pulmonary function test okay so pulmonary function test is going to help us to rule out the physiological functioning of the lungs that is like the amount of air intake and exit so that is the balance between the intake and the output of the air as well as you are able to rule out the the lung expansion that is the capacity of the lungs you are able to rule out with your pulmonary function test and then coming to the chest radiography you are able to rule out any conditions which is related to the bones of the chest so anything which is related to the bones when there is a crowding of um, bones when there is some infections when there is a fracture when there is a tumor all these things you are able to rule out with your chest x rays and then coming to computer tomography computer tomography or nothing but chest ct which is going to help us to rule out the disorders of the chest which includes the uh, tumors secretions Uh, any growths all these things which we are going to rule out with your com computer tomography and then we have the lung ventilation and the perfusion scan so as the name says this is going to tell how the ventilation to the lung is taking place that is the exchange of the oxygen and carbon dioxide you are able to rule out as well as you are going to rule out the perfusion to the lung whether it is adequate or not okay so this is with your lung ventilation and the perfusion scan then coming to pulmonary angiography pulmonary angiography is going to tell us whether there is an adequate vascularization to the lungs as well as it is going to tell out whether there is an embolism whether there is a block in the lungs okay so that we are able to rule out with your pulmonary angiography and then we have bronchoscopy so as the name says it is a scopy we are going to insert and we are going to rule out whether there is any obstruction so obstruction can be in any form of uh, a mass tumor a growth a foreign body obstruction so anything can be present you are going to analyze these wh what is the obstruction that is present as well as it will help us to aid in the removal of the foreign body maybe it is secretion also some thick consistency secretions also you can rule out so and you your main aim is going to evacuate the content okay so the next thing is your laryngoscopy so laryngoscopy again it is going to rule out your larynx okay so the scopy that is going to be inserted till the larynx to rule out whether there is a foreign body obstruction or otherwise secretions or growth formations whatever it is present you are going to rule out in the larynx that is going to be helpful in diagnosis of your masses and other abnormalities is your laryngoscopy and then we have your media stenoscopy so media stenoscopy is nothing but it is going to rule out like you are going to rule out the abnormality of the media stenum so that is like in the media stenum when there is a growth or a tumor or an embolism you are going to rule out with your media stenoscopy and then we have thoracentesis so thoracentesis is a very common procedure when there is a collection of fluid in the thoracic cavity you will be using this thoracentesis so thoracentesis is a big procedure and that we will be discussing in detail later okay so just remember thoracentesis is a diagnostic procedure where we are going to use it again and again when we get into the respiratory system disorders and then we have visual examination so visual examinations are nothing but 
we are going to do a physical examination on the patient. So, we are going to assess the uh, nose, larynx, the throat, mediastinum, the lungs, all these like not exactly your internal examination, your physical examination where you can use a scopy or otherwise just a physical examination externally to analyze. And then we have the throat cultures. So, when you suspect a microorganism or like when there is a continuous uh, or repeated um, throat infections, you take a throat culture to rule out the organisms. And then we have tuberculosis test, tuberculosis test you know it is done to assess the presence of tuberculosis. Okay? So, usually you will be taking this sample in the early morning, 3 days continuously, consecutive days you will take the sample and you will assess the AFB bacilli in that. Okay? So, the presence of AFB bacilli indicates the patient is having tuberculosis positive. And then coming to the lung function test, so you have your um, spirometers, so which is going to tell the capacity of the lungs that is the expansion of the lungs it is going to tell you. So, that is called as your lung function test and then your peak flow meter again you are going to assess the peak flow that is like what is your maximum expansion of the lung. So, how much is the ex like uh, externally how much is the air output coming ok. So, you will have a meter and when you blow that meter will indicate what is your expiratory flow rate. So, that is your peak flow meter and then comes the lung biopsy. Lung biopsies are going to rule out when there is a tumor, whether uh, if you want to rule out a malignant tumor or otherwise um, cancerous tumor, you suspect there is some cancer cells or something abnormally which is present in the lungs, you take a lung biopsy. Okay? So, in this class, we have discussed about the diagnostic procedures which is related to the respiratory system. So, which includes your pulse oximeter, capnography, sublingual carbon dioxide level, ABG analysis, D dimer, CBC, sputum analysis, pulmonary function test, chest radiography, computer tomography, lung ventilation and perfusion scans, pulmonary angiography, bronchoscopy, laryngoscopy, mediastinoscopy, thoracynthesis, visual examinations of the different parts, throat cultures, tuberculosis test, the lung function test, peak flow meter and the lung biopsies. Hope you understood the class. In the next coming classes, we will discuss the disease conditions which are related to the respiratory system. Till then, take care. Bye.